Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us today. Uh, I'm delighted to welcome you all to our special event today. Uh, my name is Namoy Malcolm, and I'll be your host for this morning's event, Read My Way, uh, which is in partnership with the Melbourne Writers Festival. We hope that the next hour or so will be an informative journey into how accessible formats are produced. Before we get started, I would like to do an acknowledgement of country. We acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands from which we meet all over Australia. We pay our respects to our elders, past and present, and we extend that respect to Torres Strait Islanders people who are here today. I want to introduce you to our panel today. And our panel will include Sarah Blodern, Acting Business Manager for Library Services, Victoria Rogers, Coordinator of the Felix uh, and Children's Library Services, Jane Wiegener, the Production Manager, Jason Gibbs, our National Audio Business Development Consultant, and Tony Wu, Product and DVA Manager. I'd like to outline our event today so you know what you're getting into as we move through the different presentations. So Vision Australia is pleased to open its doors virtually to, to the public for what hopefully will be an enlightening presentation into how accessible formats are created. During our session today, we look forward to showcasing uh, many of our departments, including our library service, our Braille and audio production, and our retail store. If you have questions, we really encourage you to put them into the chat. Um, if you're a Zoom attendee, you can pop your questions directly into the chat. And if you're using a screen reader, the hotkey command to do that is Alt plus H. Uh, alternatively, you can send your questions to library at visionaustralia.org. All right, so before we get started, I just want to give you my own personal journey with audiobooks and with gaining access to the printed word as a person who is totally blind myself and has been so for a little over 20 years. Having access to the printed word really gives my imagination a playground with which to immerse itself. Uh, whether I'm reading for leisure or whether I'm reading more technical books and magazines and periodicals, having access to the printed material, either using an audiobook or using my screen reader to read text, really helps me to stay connected with my world in the way that I choose. With that said, I want to hand you over to Sarah. Blodern. Sarah Blodern is going to give us a little bit of information about our Vision Australia Library, and then we'll move on in our presentations. So thank you so much for joining us this morning, and I really hope you enjoy your time. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Namoy, um, and welcome everybody this morning. I appreciate you being here on a Sunday morning. Hope you're all fully caffeinated. Um, I certainly am. So hopefully that will get us through the next hour or so. Um, so I'm really privileged to manage the Vision Australia Library, um, which is a repository of accessible information. Um, and I'm going to just share with you a little bit about what we do today. Um, please, if you have any questions, um, feel free to pop them in the chat and we'll get to as many as we can. Now I'm just going to share my screen. We'll get started. Okay, so what are accessible formats? Some of you might have come across the term before, for some of you it might be quite new, and what it looks like for every person is quite different. 
Um, so within our library, we hold a number of accessible formats, um, including our audiobook library. We also offer Braille for our clients that are Braille readers. Um, we are, make available large tent, a large print and electronic text. Around 18% of adult Australians have a print disability. So this, um, of course, covers um, a vision impairment or blindness, um, but it also includes a lot of other things that people might not consider um, a print disability or might not kind of have, have put together. Um, so for example, um, dyslexia is a, uh, an area that where we have a lot of clients that have dyslexia. Um, while this is a um, neurological in nature, the condition, it does inhibit somebody reading the printed word. Other um, conditions that we see in our library service, um, in our client base, are things like um, multiple sclerosis. Um, people may have suffered a stroke and are unable to hold a book or unable to read the words in a book. Um, so all of these people are eligible for our library service and we, and we encourage as many um, as would like to, to join up to use our service. So we're a public library service, so much like your local public library, um, although I guess we look a little bit different, um, but they, we were governed by the same rules. Um, so we are free for all of our clients, which is really wonderful. Um, we have clients across Australia. We're not limited to one area. So um, we have clients from as far as Western Australia um, in, in Norfolk Island, Tasmania, all over at the moment, we have around 7,000 active clients, which is wonderful. Um, and we have a range of people, as I mentioned, with, with different um, print disabilities that access our service. We also have a real range of ages. Um, we have quite a number of young people who, even from a few months old, their parents sign them up to use our early literacy library. Um, and I recently heard that our oldest client is 106 and she's still one of our most avid readers, which is really wonderful. So we have our audiobook library, as I mentioned, we're the largest audiobook library in Australia. We also have a Braille book library. We offer a large amount of music Braille and we have our children's literacy kits, which are very unique to us in Victoria. We'll tell you lots more about them a little later. Within our audiobook library, we have around 45,000 titles um, that we make available to our clients. We also, also partner with a, a company called Bookshare, which has allowed us to offer even more um, to people. Our newspapers and magazines are available to clients on a subscription basis. Um, and for those, they actually are received by our clients either through their app or on their um, listening device prior to them hitting the shelves in the morning. Um, so we're able to keep our clients up to date um, with, with lo local and um, national news, um, which is wonderful, uh, and they can subscribe to as many as they would like. Um, our magazines cover a wide range of general topics and, and things that have interest. And probably no surprise to the librarians on today that our most popular genres are crime and mystery. I think that's pretty common um, across libraries and bookstores. Um, we also learn a lot of romance, um, a lot of historical fiction and family stories. Our audiobooks are human narrated as well. Um, so that means that a person has recorded them. We um, have a wonderful amount of volunteers that record our audio for us. Um, and we also purchase audio. So um, that way it's a much nicer listening experience than an electronic voice. Our audio is in a format called DAISY audio. You may have come across this before, you might not have. Um, so that stands for Digital Accessible Information System. And this was actually developed um, about 20 years ago now um, by um, uh, people who wanted to create a better reading experience for people that were vision impaired. Um, and the DAISY format allows a lot more flexibility in the way that somebody listens or reads a book. Um, and it just makes it a lot easier to navigate. So now there is a huge amount of libraries across the world that, that have adopted this same DAISY audio format. And that's the format that we put all of our audio into. It means that navigation is a lot easier and you can um, narrow it down a lot more, um, even navigating line by line if you want to, or um, you can add bookmarks um, and change speed, et cetera, which is really great, um, not only for um, people that listen for recreation, um, but for our clients who are receiving audio books um, for their studies. Um, it's great that they can kind of um, use these different um, DAISY 
features um, to navigate better. So we have an app called the VA Connect app, which has been designed specifically for our clients um, to be as accessible as possible. Um, so it's, it's quite a simple interface. Um, it allows for all the actions that you require for your library to happen within the app. Um, so you can search the catalog, you can add um, items to your virtual bookshelf um, and you can uh, download, you can receive notifications, subscribe to all of your newspapers and magazines. Um, so that makes it super accessible for people um, and it works with the accessibility features in, in Apple and Android devices. Um, so it can be navigated with um, uh, voice to text as well, text to voice. But for some people, um, they, they don't want technology, they might not be digital natives or um, some of our older clients do feel that they would prefer a more simple interface. Um, so we have a number of different devices that are available for clients that, that are not using smart technology at this stage. Um, for example, we have the Envoy Connect player. I'll just describe it for anybody that can't see it. It's about the size of a mobile phone. Um, it's just a small little handheld device. Um, on the front, it has a really simple interface with six buttons, which allow for navigation, stop, um, play. You've got your volume button, as well as a couple of others. And on the back, it has a solar panel for recharging. So this was a player that was designed by Vision Australia, um, and a lot of our clients now use it. It's great for those that are averse to technology, um, but also great for our rural clients because it doesn't require a constant internet connection. So you can load up your books and then you're good to go for a number of weeks or, or months until you need to do another reload. Braille is another thing that we feature in our library service. Um, hopefully everybody here today has had some experience or at least um, seen some Braille. Um, you've probably seen it on some signage um, and around in different places. Um, and that I suppose for a lot of people, they wonder if Braille is still a relevant um, source of information or a way to, to um, take in information. Um, but it absolutely is. So while audio has really come, in, come to the fore in the last 10 to 20 years, um, that hasn't uh, excluded or reduced the, um, the use of Braille. Um, there are some things that audio doesn't teach. For example, um, you can't learn spelling from an audio book. You also can't learn grammar and punctuation. Um, so for a lot of our clients, they will learn Braille um, and it really it, it helps them to you know, live the life that they choose to live. Um, and um, just like... Uh, literacy for, for any child or any person, the sooner you get it happening into people's hands, um, the better the outcome. Of course. So our Braille library, um, we have both eBraille and embossed and Braille volumes, um, which we post around Australia to our clients. Um, our largest Braille book is Les Miserables, which is 45 volumes of Braille. Um, so that one comes in a few bags. But for a lot of our books, um, as you can imagine, Braille is a lot larger than print. Um, so uh, for a Harry Potter novel, for example, you're looking at about eight to 10 volumes of Braille. Um, but our, our clients who use Braille are such avid Braille readers. They just like having a printed book under your, in your hands. Um, often is a nicer experience than a Kindle or an ebook. Um, so many of our, our Braille users just love to stick to the, the physical Braille. We also have a print Braille collection, which is um, storybooks for, well, for children, um, which have the, the picture and the um, print, and then we overlay them with a clear Braille sticker. So that's really great for having a shared reading experience. Um, if a child's learning Braille, but sighted um, mum and dad or siblings can also enjoy the story and the pictures. So that's about our library. Um, I just wanted to share just as I finish up um, some of the lovely feedback we get about our library service. Um, so uh, the first one here, it says, um, Dear Vision Australia, um, please find and close a daisy reader. My mother so enjoyed using the daisy reader as her glaucoma slowly took her eyesight away. She would sit for hours listening and then chat animatedly about them later. As she lived independently, these books were a great comfort and stimulation for her. The second one says, I would like to thank those concerned at BA Library for the happiness they gave mum over the last few years. 
She listened to books every day and missed them when she couldn't. And the last one, I'm so very excited to be accepted into this class to do something I've wanted to learn for years and having some guidance is fantastic. So we, we like to offer a full suite of um, different activities as well. Recently, writing classes have been really popular, um, but it's really lovely to kind of get that feedback. Um, helps us to continue to do what we um, to do, you know, what we do. And we're really all very passionate about it. I'll just quickly put up our contact details if you wanted to get in touch. Um, we'll put them up again at the end when everybody's finished. Um, but thank you so much for your time. I hope this has helped people to understand a little bit more about our library service and what we do. And I will hand back to Namoy now. Thank you so much, Sarah. Uh, I'd like to now invite Victoria Rogers, who is the coordinator of the Felix and Children's Library Service, to give us a bit, little bit of a, a rundown on how that works. Hello everybody and um, thank you for attending. Um, I'm going to share my screen now um, and share my PowerPoint presentation. Um, if you bear with me. Um, and I'll start my slideshow. Okay, there we are. So I work for the Felix Library. Um, I also deal with the children's libraries and the young adults libraries, but the Felix Library is what I'm going to be talking to you about today. Um, and oh dear goodness, sorry, my slideshow is advancing and I didn't want it to. Let me just um, go back. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Uh, okay, I'll just share my screen again. Okay. So hopefully we've got back to the beginning. Um, so the Felix Library at Vision Australia supports children's literacy and learning in a very unique way um, that's very specific to our library. Um, we have included in a Felix Library kit um, the standard picture book that you'd buy off the shelf at a bookshop. Um, we have contracted or uncontracted braille, which is um, overlaid directly onto the picture book pages in hardware in clear vinyl. Um, we include the elements of the story illustrated in a tactile format so that our children can feel the pictures. And we have a high quality audio um, version of the story um, which we read and um, sorry I'm just going to have to do it this way and a toy that resonates with the reader so it's a tangible representation of the story so in a story say about a dinosaur we would include a plastic dinosaur a large size one so that the child could uh, feel what a dinosaur feels like the Felix library is generally open from children aged from birth to seven years old who are blind or who may have a print disability and they can become a member and enjoy stories with their parents or their siblings. So there are elements of a picture storybook that are harder to grasp without the visuals and this is perfectly put by the tale of seven blind men who are trying to describe an element an elephant and each blind man can only reach one part of the elephant and describes that part but you need to put the whole thing together to actually understand what the elephant looks like um, so we're hoping that by putting items with some sort of context in a tactile format that our children can fully experience the concept and they can cognitively anchor that concept and start to build an experience of the of the world. For example, 
it's really easy to read the story of a very hungry caterpillar and see a picture of the egg on a leaf and start to grasp the idea of what the egg is other than the egg that you eat for your breakfast. Um, so if you take a moment to think of the line, in the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. And you think to yourself, what is an egg? How does the egg stay on the leaf? Um, what shape is the egg? Is it the same as my breakfast egg? Can you imagine feeling the egg and experiencing that? And by bringing the story to life in a tactile form, and in the slide that I'm showing you here, we can see the tactile book for the very hungry caterpillar. We've taken a fabric leaf and we've sewn a pearl bead upon the leaf and attach that to the card. So the child can feel the pearl bead on the leaf, uh, feel the veins of the leaf and start to grab the concept of what the caterpillar egg might be um, and experience that. And uh, they can start forming questions for ongoing learning and start beginning stages of critical analysis. Then we add more context to the story with a toy. And I'm changing slide here and showing uh, the layout of two of our picture books. One is ABC, What Can I Be? And um, it shows a tactile page of a fish. O is for oceanographer. And uh, it's also showing the page P is for paleontologist. And the toy that we included with this kit was the plastic dinosaur. Um, I'm also showing another page spread, which is a book about shapes, five wild shapes. And for this one, we have a triangular pyramid block, which is very textural. Uh, so the child can actually hold a, something that has triangle sides, triangle faces, and un begin to understand what a triangle truly is. Um, another newer addition to the Felix Library is the Lego Braille kits. I'm showing some slides here of one of our children, our beautiful children, holding some Lego Braille pieces and placing them onto uh, the standard board. The Lego Braille kits uh, really help make Braille learning fun. Their Braille bricks have the same structure as a regular two by four brick, but the top face of each brick features a different Braille character and they can be put onto the mounting plate to build up words or sentences, or they can be built like regular Braille. And the, the studs of the Braille brick are perfect for representing the raised dots of a Braille character. Um, and just brings that element of, learn, of, of fun to learning spelling, punctuation and grammar. And everyone knows that learning is so much easier when it's play. <laughs> um, I said at the start of the presentation that the Felix Library is for children aged from birth to seven years old, but that's not actually the full story. We have a wider range of children who are either learning Braille or um, have a reading age that's slightly lower than their chronological age. And we also have parents and even grandparents who use Felix kits to read with their children with sight or no sight and their children with a print disability and to help them experience the joy of a shared story time. Now, in the slide I'm showing you here, we've got a pile of letters which all say lovely, lovely things about Felix and how much the families have enjoyed reading the kits with their children. And we have one of my favourite photos of this year, which is one of our clients, Nick. Uh, he's a grandfather. He's reading on a porch with his grandchildren, Matilda and Scarlett. Uh, Scarlett's holding the tactile handbook while Nick is reading Zaza's baby brother to her um, and everybody's really smiling because they're enjoying their story time and Nick is one of our frequent readers. He exchanges his kit very often and loves story time so much that he actually shared it via Zoom during the lockdowns so that he could continue reading with his grandchildren. We have about 500 members currently uh, that are active and they're right across Australia, everywhere, every corner of the nation. And each of those kits can be rotated every couple of months. It takes a little while to get through the post. Um, and um, so 
roughly going to the post office, coming to us takes around about a week and then the same process in reverse takes about a week. So it takes a little while to get those kits, but um, we try and do it as fast as we can. Using the post is free for our clients. Um, any product sent which is for a print disability can be sent for free through the Australia Post Service. And the kit that um, we send, I will go back to this earlier slide here and hold up one in my hands for anyone who can see me on screen. We have a very sturdy blue bag, which is the size of a laptop bag and we have a clear window at the front of that where we can put the client's address on one side when they get it they can slip that out turn it over and it's got our address on the other side slip it back in the bag and just take it to the post office it is really easy I had a mum who was on the phone to me on Friday who was amazed how easy the service was to use and absolutely thrilled that she could just wander up the post office and take her kit back and walk away and it was all handled for her and the next one would arrive on her door in a couple of weeks time each new kit we make um each title we buy costs us about $700 to produce in the kit form. But as you can tell from the feedback we're getting from the clients and the smiles on the faces of Nick and his grandchildren, it is worth absolutely every cent that we spend. All in all, Felix Library provides access to literature and learning for and leisure in an accessible and enjoyable format. And we hope that our children will be able to gain so much more insight into the world around them through reading and develop a love for literature that will take them um, to a point where they can ask deeper questions and increase their concentration and their memory and their knowledge and interest. Thank you very much for listening to my presentation. I will pass back to Nimoy. Thank you so much, Victoria. Uh, to further the conversation on tactile exploration of the printed word, I'd like to welcome Jane Wiedner to present on the production of different uh, tactile ways. Jane is our production manager in New South Wales. Welcome, Jane. Thank you, Namoy. I'm just trying to share my screen. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Today, I'd like to talk to you about our Vision Australia Accessible Format Team. We are a small group of transcribers, audio producers, proofreaders and customer service reps who convert print material into accessible products such as Braille, large print, audio, electronic text and tactile graphics to ensure our clients have equal access to information. We also provide consultation services to organisations to review and audit their print collection uh, so that uh, to ensure that that material is also accessible. In FY21, our transcription team converted over 162,000 print pages into uh, many formats, 102 Braille master pages, 38,000 e-text pages, 85,000 large print pages, and over 1,400 tactile graphics. And on screen, there is a picture of one of our library books. Sorry, Braille library books. We have a wide range of client groups, including individual clients and their families, schools and universities, commercial organisations, government agencies, and our own Vision Australia Library. We are fortunate enough to be funded by the federal government's print disability grant to provide free accessible materials to Vision Australia clients. For our commercial and sorry, for our commercial and government clients, we charge a fee for service, which provides some income to support the work we do. 
The production team converts a large range of accessible formats, including audio and braille books for our library, which we've just heard about, children's print braille books, university textbooks in, ele in electronic text, braille recipes and instruction manuals, braille and e-text exams for year 12 students, audio and large print bank statements, tactile maps for new buildings, braille business cards, braille music scores, and tactile diagrams. One of our most important services is the personal support service for Vision Australia clients. Clients of Vision Australia can request up to 360 print pages per financial year to be converted to their preferred accessible format. Examples of eligible materials include personal letters, appliance instructions, legal documents, recipes, music, knitting patterns, diagrams, maps and books. It is a free service that is funded by the Federal Government's Print Disability Grant. In the next few slides, I just want to show you a few photos of our products that our clients use in, every, in their everyday life. Uh, so on screen we have the uh, an election material. We do a lot of work for the Australian Electoral Commission, and on screen is a braille, uh, braille some braille material and some audio material for um, an election we did a couple of years ago. But uh, we've only just recently done the New South Wales election in the last week. Their material. We've just done the uh, 2021 census. Uh, we sent over 200 Braille census forms to our blind residents just in the last uh, few months. Here we have some of our educational tools made by our UV printer. We have a tactile map of Australia. It's a bit hard to see on screen. It's a shame I don't have any uh, actual ones to show you. But uh, tactile map of Australia, we've got some Braille and large print rulers and a uh, children's tactile puzzle. We often get sent a lot of photos from our clients and there's a photo there um, of uh, one of our, it's actually one of our, our lovely staff members, Ria, who is standing in uh, some bushland and using the UV printer, we have created that photo by adding layers and textures onto uh, a um, piece of uh, cardboard or acrylic that might be. And uh, you can see uh, in the picture, there is actually uh, textures and lines in the folds of her dress, in her hair and in the surrounding bushland. We also produce tactile floor plans for offices. And uh, there's some you know, playing cards there that we have uh, put tactile lines onto with our UV printer. We produce children's books, similar to the uh, books that uh, Felix produced with the Braille label over the top of the book. And uh, more, uh, most recently and very popular is uh, QR codes. We also produce uh, print and uh, raised print and Braille signage for buildings and labels for Braille labels to identify household objects. Here's just a couple of photos of our very hardworking equipment in our Parramatta office. We have some braille embosses on screen and our tactile products are produced using a laser cutter, a UV printer and a PF machine also sh shown on screen. <clears throat> to finish up, I wanted to share a story with you about one of our young clients. In 2019, one of our clients named Jacob, who was in year one at the time, started to learn Braille. And his teacher suggested that he write a story in Braille just to give him a little bit more motivation. So Jacob, Jacob wrote a book about a character called Mr. Onion and his adventures. He manually brailled the story using a Perkins brailler. His sister Lizzie drew the illustrations and his mum, Leslie, translated the Braille into text. The school library bound the book for him and added it 
to their collection so other students could also enjoy the stories. So on screen is a picture of one of Jacob's original books, Mr Onion Goes on Holidays. So you can see it is hard to see the braille that he actually um, brailed on his Perkins, but his mum um, has handwritten the print underneath the brow and, and Lizzie has done some illustrations for him. The book became so popular that Jacob has already written another five Mr Onion books in the series. However, the original book that Jacob brailed went missing. So to, prefer, to preserve the rest of the brow series, uh, Jacob asked the Vision Australia transcription team to produce an electronic master of the books so that additional copies could easily be made if they got lost or if they wanted to make more than one copy. And I've just shared a picture of a Perkins brow machine, similar to the one that Jacob would have used to hand braille his original books. The transcription team saw an opportunity to bring the Mr Onion books to life by creating tactile illustrations along with the braille. We had recently purchased a Roland UV printer, which uses layers of UV ink to create high quality tactile lines and textures onto any surface. And it would, we knew it would be perfect for this project. The transcribers carefully recreated the hand-drawn illustrations using Corel Draw software and created the braille using the Duxbury software. And there's a picture there of Nicole, our transcriber. And she has three screens in front of her. And the first screen is, is Jacob's scan, um, original book, which is scanned, Corel Draw, where she's recreating the picture of Mr. Onion in the ocean. And then her third screen is the braille software translation. The books were then printed on the UV printer and uh, another transcriber, Deb, is standing at our UV printer in the image. Then they were spiral bound with clear covers. And the finished products look fantastic and Jacob and his school were delighted with the tactile books. And there's a picture of four of Mr Onion's books um, uh, on a desk. Jacob, who aspires to be an author, gets so much joy from knowing his books are being enjoyed by others and that they are discovering the importance of Braille for literacy, independence and equality. Vision Australia are proud to help Jacob bring Mr Onion to life and look forward to creating more tactile versions of the series. And to finish up, there's a photo of Jacob looking very proud and beaming holding his Mr Onion books. Thank you very much for listening and I'll hand you back to Namoy. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. And what a wonderful achievement for young Jacob. Uh, I'd like to now welcome Jason Gibbs, National Audio, uh, Audio Business Development Consultant to the stage to talk with us about how Vision Australia continues to bring text to life through audio. Thank you very much, Namoy. Um, I believe that Sarah is getting our video ready, uh, which features young Sam Colley, one of our presenters. Um, really privileged and, and thankful that Sam uh, pre-recorded a conversation and, and some interviews in our studio uh, to give a little bit of insight into what we do um, in our audio and uh, radio services. So take it away, Sam, and thanks everyone for being here. I'm sorry, I'm just going to make sure that my sound is sharing. Okay. Radio. Hey, I'm Sam Cully, the host of Talking Vision on Vision Australia Radio. I'm here today to tell you all about Vision Australia Radio and the services we provide to the blind and low vision community, as well as those with print disabilities. Today we're here to chat with a few volunteers that make Vision Australia Radio happen. We go out to 700,000 listeners every month, um, made possible by a dedicated team of over 500 volunteers. 
75% of our programming is Radio for the Print Handicap licensed. Here to tell us more about her show, we have Renee with us. Renee, welcome to uh, Studio One today. Thank you. This is a studio actually that I sit in when I am a narrator and I do afternoon live and this is where I sit. Wonderful. And Renee, how long have you been involved with Vision Australia Radio? Ooh, if I told you that, you'd be able to guess how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> Dangerous question. I started in 1997 and I took a break and did something else. I started in the old building when we were 3RPH with Steve and Jolly. Um, and then I came back probably about five years ago. Uh, I still read here. I also, um, uh, what can I say? I, I also work on reception from time to time, but reading, that's what I do. So how have the volunteers adapted during the pandemic with everything being remote and on offsite? Well, we still had some, uh, some readers. Um, we, we don't have now the researchers coming in. We all used to sit uh, in the prep room because you have, um, we don't just walk in off the street and read. We have an hour to prepare what we're reading. Um, and so we're often sitting with the researchers. All that has stopped. Uh, since um, since COVID, uh, there are still readers that always, each one now is in a separate studio. Yep. So you don't have the familiarity which we have in this, where I have a, my presenter and I'm reading and there's a third reader. All that has gone and that's what we miss. Mm. Uh, but the service still goes on. You can turn on your radio in the morning. You'll still listen to people reading. Um, and that's what we do. And we just want to come back and do it again. And Renee, I hear there's also people of diverse backgrounds that get a lot out of the Vision Australia radio programming. Well, see, that's absolutely true. And that's another little incentive for us to read more clearly and perhaps a, perhaps more slowly than, than we would under normal circumstances. Because if we are aware that people with, if English is the second language, then we just have to be that bit more careful about how we say it and what we say. Here is Dennis, and uh, can you tell us? Yeah. Yes. Dennis, tell us all about uh, what you've got set up over here. Oh well, this is uh, where the volunteers work. Over here, we go through all the newspapers after they've been read for the news, and we cut out um, articles for the shows like Afternoon Live and other topics. As I say, there's usually a lot of people here getting stuff ready for programs like that. Mm. And so I've done a bit of that myself. And uh, as I've just indicated, I did yes. that thing. I used to read on the, um, used to read uh, from the newspapers in yes. the morning. I now tend to read, uh, to narrate books. Mm. Or, and or magazines, uh, which I think you'll be hearing a little more about in a Absolutely. minute. Absolutely, wonderful. Yes. Now I concentrate my efforts uh, narrating books. Right. And these are books that the library sends up and says, we, we have somebody who would really like this book to be read. Mm. Um, and it's nice to sit there and think that uh, somebody is going to benefit from uh, my sitting there reading books, which I must say, I might never have chosen for myself to read. Mm. Um, and it's quite interesting how absorbed one gets. And uh, I will read a few chapters on a day and go home and can't sleep at night wondering whether the heroine will exactly. actually meet her. Yeah, you got to resolve the cliffhanger. Or, or yeah. not, yes. Okay. Um, but, uh, it's uh, it, it's interesting uh, for sure you know, the variety it's provided to me for sure absolutely well thank you so much Dennis oh, it was an right. absolute pleasure hearing from you today and getting welcome. to know all about the uh, research the meticulous planning that goes behind every Vision Australia radio program as it does yes as it does and now we're in Studio 2, chatting with another volunteer of ours. Um, we've got a narrator and presenter, Jonathan, with me in the studio. Jonathan, thank you so much for being here today. Oh, great pleasure, Sam. Now, um, Jonathan, we'll start off with, um, with getting a bit more info about you. How long have you been involved with Vision Australia Radio and how did you get involved? 
About 15 years uh, and upon retirement and living just up the road, it seemed the ideal opportunity for me to do something useful, something which I would enjoy. Uh, so I've been here ever since. Mm -hmm. And um, tell us a bit more about the braille and audio services that you've been involved with over the time that you've been here. I think my involvement probably has been predominantly, if not exclusively, in reading uh, for people their bank statements mm. for the visually impaired. Or, and um, so uh, the rest of my work has been of a more general narrating books and magazines. But I think the personal support has been, as I indicated, uh, reading people's bank statements. Okay. And what sort of things have you narrated over the time? Has there been a highlight of, you know, something that you've really gone away thinking, oh, wow, that was a fantastic thing. I'd love to do more of that. Well, it's been an extraordinary uh, collection of things in mm. the facility. Normally, uh, as indeed of today, I have been reading Wheels magazine for some reason. I was oh, yes. designated as the uh, usual, perhaps, narrator of Wheels. But uh, memorably, I did a uh, uh, Royal Australian Air Force pilot training manual, which I must say came as a considerable surprise to me. Yes. Um, and uh, the most challenging, however, for sure, was the autobiography of a grand chess master and having only ever played chess as a youth and not particularly well, I had to mm describe blow by blow his 10 most memorable encounters with uh, the world's leading chess players and that mm. was taxing um, and needed to be precise otherwise it would have been a pointless exercise. Uh, so look it's been an extraordinary variety of items that I've had to read and that's part of the fun. But, Absolutely, uh, yeah. You never really know quite what might land on the desk. Oh, thank you so much, Jonathan. That's wonderful. It's good to hear about all the things you've been involved with and a lot of highlights along the way. Indeed. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thanks so much for joining us today. I hope you've got a lot out of knowing more about our radio and audio services that Vision Australia Radio has to offer. If you'd like to find out more about Vision Australia Radio, feel free to head to the website at varadio.org or you can give Vision Australia a call on 1300 8474 That's 1300 8474 Thank you very much, Sam. So I might just do a little bit of a recap there, Sarah, if I can. Um, a few questions around how to listen. So absolutely, uh, the easiest way to remember to uh, find our services is by going to our radio homepage. So that's varadio.org. And we have uh, traditional AM or FM services uh, right across the country in Adelaide, Perth, Melbourne, and regional across regional Victoria. Albury and uh, also now in Darwin, which is really exciting. Uh, also quite a few different uh, digital uh, DAV plus services. So that's digital radio, but every single one of our services can be broadcasted online. So uh, yeah, if you go to the homepage, varadio.org, you can click on uh, any number of those services and listen at any time. We've also got a range of podcasts. Uh, you can find them on iTunes, Spotify, and all those, like yeah, your preferred podcast platform really. Um, yeah, 700,000 listeners a month and all because of the 500 plus volunteers that make it happen. So uh, it, our, every one of our presenters are volunteers, except for one, actually, uh, just the one. Uh, but if you would like to learn about volunteering, you can go to the visionaustralia.org website as well. And we often post vacancies uh, where we're seeking volunteer support. So thank you again for everyone uh, being here today and uh, taking a look at our radio services. And over to you, Sarah and Namoy. Thanks so much, Jason. Appreciate that. And thanks to you, Sam, um, for a wonderful presentation there. I'd like to now welcome Tony Wu, uh, Product and DVA Services Manager, to talk with us about some of the different technologies that you've heard about today that uh, individuals may wish to purchase to access our library services. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Moy. I'm just going to share my presentation.
Um, so my presentation will be focusing on how one can access information using products that you can purchase through uh, Vision Store. So you can access information through various formats, which my colleagues have already um, told you about. Uh, one is print, so that's hard copy material. There's electronic, um, soft copy material. There's braille and there's audio. But you can access all of this information using different types of aids and or software or strategies. And I'll go through this in the next few slides. Um, so on this particular slide, um, we're talking about someone that has low vision. So some of the strategies that one can use would be to um, enlarge the print of the actual font size. Um, and hence you have various large print books um, as well as puzzle books, which is what I have um, in one of the pictures um, on my right. Um, another way that you can use a strategy, um, particularly when you're trying to read, is making sure that the room lighting is uh, sufficient. And if you further need um, to focus on your reading material, that's where focal lighting um, can come into play as well. And um, what I mean by focal lighting is that you have the light um, beamed directly onto the reading material. Um, those that have low vision uh, find that having that extra light or that extra illumination really makes a big difference to enable them to be able to see uh, or read the text that they're trying to um, read. Um, so on the picture on the top, we have a desktop uh, lamp that's just shining over a book and you have a father and the son uh, reading, uh, father and a child, sorry, uh, reading um, the, the book. Um, below that, there's a picture of a floor stand and there is a lady um, sitting on a couch, red couch, reading the book. And on the right hand side, we have one of the large print puzzle books that you can get through Vision Store. So one of the first um, devices that I'll talk about are magnifiers. So with regards to magnifiers, we enlarge the text or the object that we want to be able to see. And hopefully by doing that, that will mean we'll have less eye strain and visual fatigue when we try to read uh, documents. With regards to magnifiers, there's lots of different types. So in this particular slide, I'll talk about optical magnifiers, which uses a lens. Um, and on the left, um, the first picture on the left, uh, we have a man holding a handheld optical magnifier to be able to read his uh, book. Uh, the one on the right shows a stand magnifier. So this one you just um, put down right onto the reading material and you just move it uh, along side by side, up and down, just to navigate the page. Uh, we also have uh, magnifiers that are considered hands-free, so you wear them. Um, in this particular uh, picture that I have is uh, max detail glasses. So those that have very mild uh, vision loss, um, they might be able to use the max TV glasses to enable them to see the TV a bit more clearly. And then the last picture is uh, of a magnifying lamp. So basically um, um, underneath the brim of the, the, the lights, there is an optical magnifier lens Usually it's very weak, um, between one and a half times to two and a half times in strength. And um, having that uh, magnification lamp enables you to do reading tasks as well as um, do hobby tasks as well. Um, another form of magnifiers that I'll touch about in this particular slide are electronic or, or digital uh, magnifiers. Basically, these use a camera to capture the image. Um, and that image is shown up on the actual um, screen or monitor of the device itself. Um, and electronic magnifiers come in um, portable um, units. So the one on the, the top, one on the left, um, is what we call a stand, electronic stand magnifier. 
as you can see, the stand just folds behind uh, the screen and the camera is just behind the monitor, which will capture the documents and enable you to read the document that you're trying to read. The one on the right is a handheld electronic magnifier. Um, handheld meaning you can use it in your hand and um, you can take it anywhere basically to look at uh, things on the shelf. Uh, example, if you're in the supermarket looking at uh, price tag information. Uh, then we have desktop units, which are the two units that I have listed below. Basically, these have a larger screen or monitor size, so it allows you to read uh, a document uh, more comfortably and flu fluently as well. Um, other magnifiers that we do um, sell are called wearables, um, as well as intelligence magnifiers as, as well. So the wearable uh, magnifier, which is the one um, on the top where we have an older gentleman um, having a VR goggle headset um, and a smartphone. And basically Iris Vision has special software pre-installed into the smartphone itself. And that has uh, powerful magnification capabilities. So you can actually magnify things up close, arm's length away, as well as something right along the distance as well. So it's a really versatile uh, unit. Wearing it on your um, head means you have your hands to do hands-free tasks as well. Um, some practical examples would be um, using the computer, uh, playing an instrument, um, food preparation as another example. Um, the intelligent uh, magnifiers that I'm referring to um, will be either Android based or Windows based or Apple based. Um, and basically these tablets have uh, special low vision software. Um, basically it just allows the user to magnify uh, whatever they want to better see and magnify it onto the screen. Uh, the reason why it's intelligent because it's based on either an Android, Apple or um, Windows platform. So you can use it as a, as a mainstream tablet. Um, so you can browse the internet and um, do uh, web processing and you can also attach, um, sorry, um, pair it via Bluetooth, uh, a mini keyboard, as well as the distance camera for distance viewing as well. For those that use a computer, um, we have software called screen magnifiers, which basically enlarge everything on the screen um, from the icons to the actual font size. You can even change the, uh, the mouse cursor to something that's um, nice, big and colorful. So you can always see where you're pointing when you're using the computer. Um, and some people might also have a large print keyboard as well to be able to um, type and find the information that they need. Um, so when magnification, I guess, is no longer a viable option, we have to look at other um, ways for the client to access information. Um, and braille devices, they can fall under someone who is uh, blind or someone who has severe um, uh, vision impairment. So they can have low vision, but their low vision is quite limited. And with regards to the braille devices, we have braille displays, um, which are the two units at the top. Think of it as um, a braille keyboard um, that enables you to pair to any smart device, whether it's your computer or your smartphone or your tablet, and it allows for easier navigation of the unit itself. But at the bottom of the actual unit um, is the braille display. So that's where the information is um, displayed in braille <coughs> um, characters. So the um, individual who knows braille will be um, reading along the braille display and then inputting it through the braille keyboard. Or alternatively, um, 
if the user prefers a QWERTY keyboard, you can also get a QWERTY version as well. Um, then we have Braille note takers. Think of it as a computer, computer for a Braille user. Um, this particular unit is called the uh, Braille Note Touch uh, 32 Plus. Um, basically, it's a, a Google certified uh, device and it enables the um, user to use it like a, a computer. The other option, um, I guess, to access information is through audio or, or text to speech um, devices. Um, so our library, <clears throat> our Vision Australia library, we can access the audio books through a talking book player. Um, the one that I have showing um, at the top uh, left is the Envoy Connect, which is um, which was uh, developed um, uh, by a VA VA staff along with another company. Um, so. Talking book players allow you to access audio files. What happens is if you want to read um, hard copy material, uh, that's where we have various reading devices. Um, so we have standalone reading machines, um, which is the one that's shown on the right um, of the Envoy Connect. Uh, this one's called the Read Easy Evolve. And basically it's um, a little box um, with a computer processor inside. The top part is the camera. You position the reading material underneath the camera, you push a button, the camera will scan um, up to an A3 size page and it'll start to read the text aloud to you as well. Um, another great uh, reading device is the OrCam. So basically it's a smart camera that attaches to any um, pair of spectacles. And you can either use voice commands or you can use um, hand gestures or, um, uh, or use the control panel of the smart camera itself to tell it to capture a page of document, um, have it read out aloud to you as well. Um, and what happens if you wanna use a computer, um, but magnification software is no longer a viable option. Uh, we have screen readers, which basically um, the software will read uh, pretty much everything that's on the screen. Um, and the most common one that we recommend to our clients is JAWS, um, which is what I have on the um, bottom right hand corner. Um, our clients can also access information using uh, mainstream devices. So by mainstream devices, I mean our smartphones, whether it's an Apple or an Android, um, our tablets as well, and even our smart speakers. So with regards to the smartphone and smart tablets, um, they have inbuilt accessibility tools, which enable you to allow the user to operate the actual device um, based on their needs. And that will be how they um, access information. Uh, likewise, with the smart speakers, um, you, you ask it questions and then you, they, they respond back um, depending on which smart speaker you get. Um, so the one on the uh, bottom left is a Google Nest uh, Mini. So that smart speaker is attached to the um, Google um, uh, browser web page. So all that information is uh, found from Google. And um, the one on the right is an Amazon Echo Dot. Um, what's great about smart speakers is that you don't have to physically touch it, um, but you um, ask it a question and then they um, find that information um, from the web and re relay it back out to you, which is great. So um, mainstream devices are starting to be more accessible for our clients, which is great. Uh, my last slide is I highly recommend that you visit your local Vision Store branch um, to view the various aids and devices that I discuss in, in today's presentation. You can also uh, refer to our web shop, uh, which is shop.visionaustralia.org. And if you have any questions relating to any of the products that I just mentioned, 
uh, and you can't find it on our web shop, uh, please email vision store at visionaustralia.org. Thank you, everyone. I'll stop sharing my presentation. I'll hand you back over to Namoy and Sarah. Thanks, Tony, for that uh, presentation on the Vision Store. We have time for just a few questions. Uh, if anyone has written any in the chat, I'll hand over to Stella and to Sarah to give voice to some of those questions before we wrap up for today. Thanks, Namoy. Um, just having a look, there's a question there about how um, our, lab, our services can support public library customers um, that come into our local library branch. That's a really great, great question. Um, as a public library, um, we, we work really closely with other public libraries to support the needs of clients. Um, so we can do this in a few ways. I guess we, we do offer a partnership um, with our library service where we can support. Um, it might be with the, the supplying of players. Um, it might be just you're wanting us to do some outreach to your, your library service um, to speak about vision impairment or, or the, the different things on offer. Um, so I definitely encourage you to get in touch and I will share, sorry, I'll do that in a sec, um, the contact um, details for everyone in a moment. Um, so please touch base and we'd be very happy to kind of work with you and see how we can support um, your clients in your library. Thank you, Sarah. And we have another question here. Someone was asking about the library radio program, Hear This. They'd like some more information on how they can hear, hear this. Yeah, absolutely. So um, uh, Hear This is a wonderful program that comes out, um, it's available weekly. Um, so it features um, new titles in our library. Uh, it also features author conversations, um, kind of what's current and happening in the library space. Um, so that's definitely an awesome way to learn about the library. Um, you can podcast that and you can also listen to that through the, the radio. Um, and we do have a library newsletter, which um, also is a great source of information for anybody wanting to, to know what's happening in the library. Um, I think somebody mentioned um, the writing workshops. Um, so we'll definitely feature different events that are coming up. We're doing a lot more of that in the new year. A lot of it's now available on Zoom, um, which is wonderful because it makes it available to clients across Australia to join in. And we've got a question from Jane very early on mm. asking to explain what eBraille was or is. Yeah, sure. e Sure, eBraille is an, basically an electronic Braille file. So um, when we produce the Braille file, it can either be embossed into a hard copy uh, book uh, using an embosser or we can send the original master file, which is an electronic file, and the client can use that on some of those devices that Tony actually showed in his presentation, um, which will... Uh, uh, come up on the refreshable Braille display. So it's eBraille is just an electronic Braille file. And we, uh, our uh, transcription team, produce bro both types. Thank you. And another question here, I'm not sure that we can actually answer this. What percentage of vision impaired people in Australia have a Vision Australia Library membership. Now, we, we can't have the statistics on that, but maybe they're asking how many library members we have, Sarah. Sure. Well, the answer to that, I think, is not enough. We can always, um, you know, have more members. We, we love people to join up. Um, the more people that we can support, the better. At the moment, we have around 7,000 members across Australia. <clears throat> And isn't, we've got one here from Sasha, isn't EPUB 3, I might be reading that incorrectly, file formats used in Australia? Can anyone answer that or uh, am I asking this incorrectly? Uh, yes, Jane, um, we do produce EPUB 3 file formats. So, yes, we do. And here's a question for you, Namoy. 
Do you think you miss out on anything by not being able to access similar services from your local public library? Great question. Uh, do I think I miss out? I have access to many different uh, applications, including Vision Australia Library, the Audible service, and other uh, accessible ways of gathering content. When I find out that my local library does provide either audiobooks or um, are subscribed to some of the borrow box uh, services, I feel like I get um, as much content as I can absorb. <laughs> I can't speak for everyone, but I can say that uh, my imagination is filled with content uh, in a variety of different ways. And do we have time for one last question, Sarah? I think we'll have one more, yep. Yep. Uh, now, this might be actually more of a public library question. Could you, it's from Sujatha. Could you please give us an update of how services support public library customers access their services through their local library? So I think the question might be, can people access Vision Australia Library through their local library? Is that how you're reading that question, Sarah? Yeah, I think I touched on this one a little bit, but um, I think what we really aim to do is to equip public libraries to refer on to us. Um, I guess, you know, public libraries are such a, a great uh, space for the community. Um, there might be times, though, when um, so further services are required. For example, if you have a client come in who would like some Braille publications um, or need something converted. Um, so I think the, the best thing we can do and, and, and ask of our public libraries is to advocate for us. Um, and in a similar way, we, we do the same as, as Namoy mentioned, there's so many wonderful public library applications like BorrowBox and Libby. Um, so it's really wonderful that clients have a full range of things on offer. Um, so what that might look like is um, we could provide collateral for you to have in your public library um, in the case that somebody does come in wanting services. Um, and we also offer information sessions um, to libraries. And I believe someone also asked about nursing homes and aged care. Absolutely. If we can, we're very happy to make ourselves available to um, share information with your, your staff or your clients um, in order to assist people to use our services. So today we showcased many of our departments, including our library service, our Braille and audio production services, and our retail store. On behalf of the panelists today and on behalf of Vision Australia, I would like to thank you for joining us, giving up a little bit of your time on this Sunday morning. If you do have further questions, please feel free to email library at visionaustralia.org. My name is Namoy Malcolm, and thanks so much for tuning in. Vision Australia. Blindness. Low vision. Opportunity. Vision Australia logo. Three navy blue ovals linked together diagonally within a bright yellow rectangle.